To say tensions have escalated is an understatement as the Middle East conflict has widened yet again. Now reaching to the shores of Yemen from the Houthi rebels that have uh, been supported by Iran for many, many years. Uh, I'm going to be reporting to you from dnyuz.com in a story that is breaking just today and how this is going to affect gold's price. And But why not so much silver? Well, I think there's a lot more, I think, that are pushing silver or preventing silver from continuing to climb at the rate that gold could, uh, that potentially could occur based off of this one event. It'd be very interesting to see what happens. But this is breaking news. Israeli fighter jets bomb sites in Yemen affiliated with the Iran-backed Houthi militia on Saturday in retaliation for a deadly drone attack in Tel Aviv just a day earlier. This is according to four U.S. officials and two regional officials. It was the first time Israel has publicly attacked a group in months of escalating tensions. The Israeli airstrikes targeted gas and oil depots and a power station in the area of Yemen's Red Sea port of Hadoudai, um, or Hodeidai. And the two regional sources, of, uh, according to these two regional sources, the port is controlled by the Houthis and is the site of oil export facilities. So they're hitting him where it hurts really hard. But it is a vital conduit for civilian goods and humanitarian aid to impoverished Yemen. But the thing is, uh, you know, I'll tell you about that in a moment, because, well, there are no immediate comments by the Israeli military, although they did, since the posting of this piece, they have commented and made mention of their uh, retaliatory strike. On Friday, the Houthis claimed responsibility for firing a long-range drone that hit the coastal city of Tel Aviv, killing one Israeli and wounding several others. The Houthis, a Yemeni militant, a militia, are supported by Iran. And by the way, the Houthis kind of gained, gained their, uh, or their, uh, I guess their brand dating back to almost 1000 AD, essentially that formed a sect of a, a portion of Shia uh, a Muslim religion of Islam uh, formed after the uh, what led to the collapse of the Aksum uh, Empire uh, many, many years ago. Uh, they are supported by Iran, and which is Israel's regional foe, so there's no, uh, you know, it's pretty transparent right now. Its fighters have lobbed hundreds of missiles and drones at Israel of what they call a campaign of solidarity with Palestinians in Gaza. They have also menaced numerous commercial ships passing through the Red Sea for months now in an effort to blockade the Israeli port of Eliot. Now, the United States and Britain, alongside their allies, have struck hundreds of Houthi targets in Yemen since November and have been sharing intelligence with Israel for months. But the four U.S. officials said Israel acted alone on Saturday with no American military involvement, which is a game changer because this is, is really kind of broadening the, the the conflict right now officially where they're actually hitting right there on, on a home port, hitting them where it hurts. And you know, think about it, this port that you say is, is the conduit for civilian aid, where is all that money going? It's going to uh, these militia groups and they are very well funded. There is next to little no ye aid in Ye Yemen for uh, the people there. They, the people suffer while the people with the guns and weapons, they are enriched, which is really exactly what has happened in Gaza with Hamas uh, controlling that region really since 2005 when, when they had um, autonomy. And they did have absolute autonomy in Gaza. And look what they've done uh, uh, with that autonomy. They created tunnels. Uh, with the help of United Nations organizations as well that led to the October 7th attacks. And so this is uh, now another thing with this, with this uh, retaliatory strike. Uh, this is something that uh, will ch could potentially be a game changer and could affect the markets pretty dramatically as we head into the, uh, the end of the weekend. We had a smackdown in silver and to some extent gold's price well, what will happen on Sunday night as the markets open up in Asia? Uh, well, uh, it's, a, it's hard to say, but uh, I think that likely this could have an impact. 
uh, they hit these oil refineries, and uh, what what is that going to mean? I think or could oil's price go up? I don't know, because uh, I don't know what who, who they serve. Uh, but nonetheless, it is a something that is a pretty big deal because I think if, if Russia is is getting some oil from uh, this region, of course they they are also produce a lot of their own oil as well too. It's a different kind of crude, so they very well could be importing it to other nations that are maybe not so friendly to the United States. It could heat up tensions uh, in that regard as well which could uh, mean that the markets will become nervous, which means that gold could go up. Silver, though, I think is a metal not to watch in this scenario. Why? Well, because there's a lot more, I think, at, at stake in China with what they have been reporting, as I mentioned in a prior video, that likely could push against a silver following gold, at least at the same rate or pace. In other words, we may see if 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 uh, if people if the markets are nervous, and again, that's a big if. It could be a nothing burger for the markets. They're very very strange that way. Psychology and logic uh, oftentimes uh, do not uh, coincide with regards to how markets react. Uh, but uh, if gold were to climb up, let's say three percent on Sunday night, which would be a very big increase in a matter of a couple of hours as we head into and wait until the markets to open in London, uh, silver may only go up 2%, uh, or maybe even not at all. Who knows? Uh, those are dramatic scenarios for, a, for a, really what amounts to a few hours. Uh, but uh, silver is a metal that likely probably would not uh, react quite as intense intently in, in that scenario. Um, but uh, gold definitely could because nations hold gold People have been stock, our nations have been stockpiling it, and uh, it's it's already been really uh, well established that uh, gold's price and, and the markets around it are not afraid to test and break all time highs, and we're not that far away from it again. And so it'll be very interesting to see what happens during the Sunday night market watch, which is something that I do on this channel every Sunday night. And I hope you will join me as gold right now, as the markets are closed around the world, gold is sitting just above $2,400 an ounce. And it would not take much to get it right back up there again. Will this event play a role in it? Possibly. Especially if the other big news event, which is not the subject of this video, but it is something to consider, is there is talk that the Democrats may not have a presidential candidate uh, by Sunday night. And they are saying, that, according to one report from Mark Halpern, that Biden is preparing to, uh, uh, to exit the race, not the presidency, but to exit the race and not endorse uh, Kamala Harris, who is the current vice president. Uh, that could send us into political chaos, at least among Democrat circles, um, and in a sense, wondering who is it going to be and to change the political calculus, which could have an impact on the markets. In and of itself, I don't think it will have a dramatic impact, at least in the immediate. But if that event does occur and Biden gives a speech to the American people and say that he is not going to seek re-election now, uh, then that could, uh, coupled with what happened in Yemen, could cause the prices of gold to go up. But we really don't know for sure. So let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments section below about that scenario specifically, but also about what's going on in Yemen right now. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, will certainly increase tensions, no question about it. Iran very well could be inflamed by this, although I, will, I would be uh, surprised if Iran actually did another strike like they did before. Uh, that that certainly did rattle the markets very, very briefly, uh, but it was essentially more of a symbolic gesture than anything else. But who knows? And there's just there's just a lot of unknowns here. But uh, but things like this uh, make make uh, Americans nervous and make the people around the world nervous. And things like this very well could easily lead to uh, a, a more expansive conflict and essentially any number of things that have already happened, much less what could happen uh, that could spawn from this or even before that could lead to World War III if we're not already in it at some level anyway. Some people feel we are, others say not, but one thing is for sure that World War III will be very different than previous wars, uh, no question about that. 
and uh, and and also when we uh, found out about this this uh, this IT outage, which was the largest in the world history, um, there's a lot of conspiracy around that as well. And some of that conspiracy leads directly to Ukraine. Yes, believe it or not, that's what that's a that's a, quite a possibility. And we know that CrowdStrike is an organization, uh, as a company too, is uh, very much kind of aligned in many different ways. And some feel that could have been a test run of what could be coming in one way or another. So who knows? A anything? Uh, it's I think any questions are not off the table at this point as to what's going on. And this latest incident is just a string of, of uh, ongoing things that have been happening uh, domestically in this country, but also around the world, uh, especially with elections that we saw in the United Kingdom and in France. Uh, there's just a lot going on, and everything is happening very, very quickly. So we'll keep an eye on it all, but let me know what your thoughts are on what do you think it's going to do for gold, and what do you think about silver? Do you think the silver will be impacted? I don't think it will, but I could be completely wrong, and I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that. So I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>